Denver streets can be dangerous, and now people are coming together to bring attention to those killed in the crashes. Yeah, this walk is being held tonight to honor those who have lost their lives. Tori Mason is at that event for us tonight, which is uh, just got underway, Tori. Yes, guys, and 26 people have died on Denver streets this year already. From e-bikes to scooters, people are finding different ways to get around, and drivers have to remember that roads don't belong to cars. Drivers have signs we're taught to obey, all to prevent signs like these. We put signs at every location of a fatal crash that happened since January of last year. There are 88 people who have died in preventable traffic crashes. Xavier was one of six hit while biking. Ethan, one of 30 killed on foot. This isn't just statistics. Every single traffic fatality is a human being whose life was cut short. Logan Torre bikes from A to B. She says more drivers should slow the funk down. <laughs> I experience close calls every day. She made these signs to raise awareness, hoping not to become one herself. There are some streets that are safe and comfortable to bike on, but a lot of the destinations I'm trying to get to are on major streets like Spear Boulevard, where there's no bike lane. Last year, the city installed more than 19 miles of new bike lanes. Wow. But many drivers don't care to share the road. It's an average of at least one person per week. Denver's goal is zero traffic deaths by 2030. But despite their efforts, the numbers are going up. That we're all responsible for each other's safety, that we all share this space on Denver City streets, and we need to look out for each other. Now, that walk will end at Sunken Gardens Park sometime around 7. There, all the council members will read the names of people who died on their district streets last year. We're live in Denver. Tori Mason covering Colorado first.